We're here with award-winning journalist Meg Kissinger, who spent decades reporting on mental health and now turns her attention to her own family with bracing clarity. It's an emotional new memoir called While You Are Out, an intimate family portrait of mental illness in an era of silence. Kissinger writes about her family's struggles with depression, with anxiety, her parents' alcoholism, and the suicides of her siblings, Nancy and Danny. She searched medical records, read police reports, and spoke to her five surviving brothers and sisters about all of this. Kissinger writes, our family's shorthand way of dealing with these situations by simply not discussing them or making light of it had an insidious way of fueling shame and blame where none, where none were warranted. And Meg Kissinger joins us now. Meg, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. We should say off the top that all of your surviving siblings participated in this book, offered up their recollections. You had a Google Doc or that they could access at any time. Right. And I want to tell their story, but I also want to get to the big conclusion, which is an important one for so many families. You write that our mental health care system is not a system at all. Right. What yeah. do you mean by that? Well, a system is a set of entities that work together and really very little about how people with mental illness are treated uh, does work together. So doctors don't talk to one another. Insurance companies are quick to deny claims. Uh, we need a better coordination. And what that's what I learned in my years as a reporter. Yeah. And that's what I experienced as a daughter and a sister of people who suffered. Yeah, you, you first became aware that something might be not quite right with your own family when, you're, when you were five years old. Yeah. Your mother disappears. Right. And you don't really know why you don't learn for years to come. Tell right. us about being a child in this big, boisterous Irish Catholic family in Chicago yeah. Yeah. where something's not quite right. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. It was a joyful uh, growing up, I, I, when I look back on my childhood, I think of, of a lot of the fun that we had, but we also did have a lot of sorrow, and it was scary at times. And I write in the book about coming down one morning and my mother was gone, and no explanation. And later that day, my sister Patty and I are whisked away to an uncle's house, and we don't know for how long or what's happening. And you're not told why about that either. We're yeah. not told why. Yeah. So, and, and I was looking for my mother all over the house. Uh, but I, but the, what I would sus suspected at the time, I, I knew something wasn't quite right. And then what I came to learn years later is that she was suffering from postpartum depression and really had been treated for depression much of her life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was something that wasn't talked, talked about. about. And, and this was an era when we just didn't speak of Family no, secrets. Yeah. Yeah, you talk about that secrets fascinated and scared you at the same time. Yeah. You know, two of your siblings took their own lives. One of your, your sister, Nancy, took her life walking on the train tracks. And your father said, let's tell everybody it's an accident. Yeah. Just what that does to the family dynamic. Right. Just say that it's an accident and keeping that as a secret. Yeah, and, he, and Gail, he didn't do that in a mean way. No, it wasn't, of yeah, it wasn't not. meant to be yes. a cruel thing. It was, he was afraid. So he was, uh, I think he was afraid of being blamed, mm -hmm. uh, which some people probably did think that's, that's a human instinct, I think. Uh, you think, well, what if the if the parenting had been better? If there had been better communication, why did this happen? Uh, so he that was one thing. Another thing was the Catholic Church. Yes. He was he was afraid that she would be denied the right to a funeral mm. and to be buried in the family cemetery plot. So those were real fears at the time. We've gotten better on that, but um, that was the that was his incentive. But what that did to us as as kids was to send a subliminal message. This is on the down low. Yeah. This is right. hush hush. Yeah. We don't talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as Tony mentioned, you had participating family members. Um, you also asked them for advice for families right. that might be dealing with such tragedies. And I'm pretty sure there are people at home that are watching right now right. that are dealing. Um, what would be your advice and what did you hear from your family? I, well, first of all, shout out to my brothers and sisters because <laughs> they are awesome. Who, yeah. They're Who are okay with you writing this book. And, and yeah, you, you, you called them your yes. heroes. When they are you're my heroes. In the commercial break. Yeah. So can you imagine? Uh, I mean, it's one thing to write a story about uh, the most humiliating and in intense events of your life, but then to have your sister write it? Like, that's bananas. Right. Anyway, God bless them because they were in it, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, they wanted the, the message across that the lessons that we learned, mm. that we can make people feel less alone. Yeah. So I love your question, what, you know, what is the best advice? And it's to talk to one another yeah. and, to, and to be there for one another. 
can I tell you about my brother Jake? Yeah. yeah. So my older brother Jake, who uh, is, he struggles with depression and anxiety. Uh, Jake lives in a group home in the Chicago area, and he is so open and so willing mm. to talk about what is going on with him. And when he's struggling, he reaches out. We have this goofy family text chain yeah. uh, where we talk about football scores and yeah. all kinds of things. But when he's feeling not well, he'll let us know. Yeah, he reaches yeah. out for help. That's yeah. so and that's the bottom line. And we just have to say, Billy wanted you to mention that he won the seventh grade boys basketball free throw contest. That was the only correction. Quite everything. Yeah. Yes. That, that, that well, that was the only yes. demand that was made. No, yes, yeah. yes, I yes. did. I did ask. He's got a good shot. Yes. He's got the sh we had the shot. That was, I think, in 19... Uh, very brave of this, you, Meg. Very, very brave, brave, but this book is going to help a lot of families. It's going to give them a shot. You've got a writer's grace and a reporter's clarity, and it's going to help a lot of people. So thank you very much for yeah, being here. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Well, thank you for having thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you. While You Were Out is available wherever you like to buy your books, and if you or someone you know is struggling, uh, you can text or call the Suicide Crisis Lifeline at 988.